What's up? It's Tom Froming from Twins Daily and the Twins Prospect Handbook, which is available now. I will put links down in the description. And welcome to Twins Prospects Weekly. Each Sunday, I'm going to be talking about the minor league system, kicking that off by going through my top 50 prospects in the system. Uh, we already covered some, some of the previous sections. I'll make sure to include links down in the description of those as well if you missed those. But again, today we're focusing on numbers 21 through 30. See, as you can see, I have Junior Severino at number 30. This is a guy whose prospects stock is definitely slipping, did not perform well in 2019, but keep in mind he only played in 28 games due to injury, uh, so we'll hope that he takes a step forward in 2020. At number 29, kicking off a big stretch of right-handed pitchers on my list is Edouard Kalina. I'm usually the low guy on Kalina. Um, he doesn't strike out as many guys as you would imagine for somebody who throws as hard as he does. He's in the high 90s, he's hit 100 before. Uh, also, 8% walk percentage. That's a pretty a pretty high walk percentage. I think he'll probably end up in the bullpen, uh, but certainly a guy to keep an eye on. A lot of people are, are higher on him than I am. Uh, next up uh, at number 28 is Luis Rijo, the player uh, who the Twins acquired, the prospect that they got in the Lance Lynn trade with the Yankees. Uh, he is a control specialist. You can look at the numbers there. Uh, had a very nice year, spent the entire season with Cedar Rapids. Uh, he had the second best strike percentage in the system among uh, minor league twins pitchers who had at least 90 innings at number 27. Another guy who picked up in a, the twins picked up in a trade, excuse me, is Chris Valamont who came along with Sergio Romo uh, from the Marlins in the trade that sent Lewin Diaz over to the Miami. Um, I think he was picking on guys who were a little bit below his competition level. To be honest, he was 22 and he spent a good amount of the year, uh, pitching in the Midwest League. Uh, that's Clinton. That was Miami's Midwest League affiliate, so much like the Cedar Rapids Colonels for the Twins. Uh, but he did spend some time in, the, in high A. Um, as you can see, the thing that really sticks out is his 29.8 strikeout percentage. Uh, that's very nice. This is a guy who throws in the high 90s as well. Um, a lot of people think he'll end up in the bullpen. At number 26 is Bailey Ober. I mentioned Riho was second in the system in strike percentage. Well, Ober led the system by a Pretty big margin. He threw 75% of his pitches for strike. And as you can see, he didn't really pay for it. Didn't really give up a lot of damage. Struck out a bunch of guys. Didn't walk a lot of people, obviously, throwing that many strikes. Um, he's six foot eight, So that helps his effective velocity a lot. But Ober doesn't really light up the radar gun. He's mostly in the low 90s. Uh, but excellent command, excellent control. The only thing that's missing is health, building up innings, uh, he threw 78 and two-thirds innings last season, and that was a new career high for him. Okay, moving right along here, we have Jorge Alcala at number 25. This is a guy who transitioned into the bullpen toward the end of 2019. Uh, I don't think that that kills his prospect stock. Obviously, you'd rather have a starter than a reliever. However, I think this was kind of the assumption. Alcala did not have great numbers last year. At least the outings I saw him, it was pretty strange. He would be pitching well and then struggle to get the third out in an inning or struggle with runners on base. Uh, overall, you could see a lot of potential there. He also gave up like a 350 BABIP last year, uh, so kind of snake bitten a little bit there. Um, and there were some innings that I saw his of where hits were, could have been recorded as errors and then that kind of ballooned into a big, ugly inning. Um, so I think he's a lot better than the numbers indicate. Um, he's got to he's got to figure it out. He's got to get it moving. Um, he's up at 25 based on potential for the most part, but he could slip. Uh, number 24, Randy Dobnak. Not really going to spend a whole lot of time talking about Dobnak in particular because he's probably one of the guys who's most recognizable on this list. But I do want to say that that grouping of 29 through 24 of all these right handers splitting hairs. Uh, if you want to tell me that Edouard Kalina should be at 24 and Dobnak should be at 29, I don't really have a super great argument against for you on that one. So, um, however, at number 23, I've met Cantorino and I will say that, uh, he tops this grouping of right handers I mentioned earlier. And I would say, actually, I said this on Twitter recently, this is probably the guy I'm most confident that I have too low. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's a top candidate for uh, twins minor league pitcher of the year by the end of the year, because if he starts the year in Cedar Rapids, he's going to chew everybody in that league up. Uh, and then goes to Fort Myers, such a great pitcher environment. He's going to do really well there. And as you can see in his pro debut, he was pretty dominant. The walk percentage is a little bit higher than you'd like, uh, but Matt Canarinos is going to be a guy you know by the end of the year for sure. He was a, a 
second round draft pick in this past draft, the 2019 draft. So uh, get to know him. Number 22, Nick Gordon. At this point, I think Nick Gordon's probably reaching underrated territory, to be honest. You know, these, these high school guys drafted high, and then, you know, their prospect stock gets hyped up. And as they progress through the minor leagues, we get to know a little bit more about them and what they can't do. Nick Gordon still gets the job done. You know, something to keep in mind is that the AAA offensive environment did go a little bananas, so uh, take that with a grain of salt looking at his slash line. But he uses the whole field. He can go, he has some opposite field power, uh, not home run power, but doubles power. So, yeah, I think Nick Gordon, you know, he's not not in the top 20. He's not a top prospect in the system anymore, that's for sure. Uh, But I think he's uh, certainly, uh, people are selling him short, I think. Uh, and I think the same can be said about Luke Rayleigh uh, to some degree. I have him at number 21. You know, he's an older guy. He's 25, but he reached AAA. Unfortunately, he only played in 38 games this past season, uh, so it's hard to read too much into his numbers. Uh, but he was added to the 40-man. Uh, he'll be a guy we're going to see a ton of in spring training, guys like that who are on the 40-man but haven't made their major league debut yet. You usually see those guys get a ton of work. So I'm excited to see Rayleigh play um, for the Twins this this month. <laughs> we got ba- we got real twins baseball this month february and Rayleigh's a lot more athletic than you'd think look at him he's a big barrel chested guy but he can run pretty well he's played some center field in the minors but he's not a center fielder he's a corner guy make sure to check back next week where we're going to talk about my numbers 11 through 20 prospects if you enjoyed this give me a thumbs up consider subscribing for more uh, twins prospect talk twins talk in general here on youtube uh again i'm going to put links in the description to the 2020 twins prospect handbook And also, uh, check out this playlist of Twins highlights. There's a bunch of guys on this list that we just talked about who I have highlights of if you want to see video of them in this playlist. Check it out.